Okay, we're going to find out how you can calculate the percent composition of a sample. In other words, if you've got a sample that has uh, two or three different compounds in it, um, how much of each of those compounds do you have relative to each other? What percentage of the first one, what percentage of the second one, and so on, do you have in the sample? The tool that we're going to use to make that calculation is proton NMR spectroscopy. Now, some students will start by assuming that they've got to measure all of the protons in the spectrum. In other words, add up all of the integrals in the spectrum to get some sort of total number of protons or something like that. You don't have to do that, and it usually doesn't work out very well. Instead, what we're going to focus on is just choosing one peak that we are sure belongs to one compound and choosing one peak that we're sure belongs to another compound. So here we've got uh, an NMR spectrum and we're assuming that you've already determined what you've got in the spectrum. You've already decided you've got some one pentanol and some pentanoic acid, for example. So we're just going to choose one peak that represents the pentanol and one peak that represents the pentanoic acid. We'd likely pick peaks that are isolated in the spectrum, that are far apart from others. Um, now students would often be tempted to use an OH peak. And so for instance, that far left peak at 12 parts per million probably corresponds to the carboxylic acid OH peak. But using OH peaks for you know, most purposes in NMR spectroscopy can be a bad idea. And in this case it is, um, OH peaks are a little bit unreliable in terms of integration. So they can integrate too large sometimes, they can integrate too small other times. They're not a great tool for what we're gonna do here. So instead, the two peaks that are sort of isolated from the others that we're gonna use are the ones at 3.6 and at 2.36. One at 3.6 corresponds to the pentanol and there are two hydrogens in the pentanol that show up at 3.6 parts per million during that carbon next to the oxygen. Whereas in the pentanoic acid, there are two hydrogens that show up at 2.3 parts per million. Um, and we're gonna compare those two peaks to, to get a ratio of these two compounds to each other. Now, maybe you've got um, a spectrum and you've had the software print out some measurement of the integral at the bottom. I don't, I've just got the integral curves. And so I'm just going to, well, maybe I would take a ruler and measure these integrals from the bottom of the rise to the top of the rise on one, and from the bottom to the top of the rise on the other one. Um, and I'm just going to estimate this uh, just for this video and say, maybe this, when I measure it with a ruler, maybe this is a four to one ratio, okay? So what that tells me, I have four times as much of these hydrogens at 3.6 as I do of those hydrogens at 2.3 parts per million. Now, they're both meant to represent two hydrogens in their respective molecules. So if I had equal amounts of these two molecules, those two integrals would be the same, but they're not. And so what I'm going to do to get the amount of pentanol in there, I'm gonna take the integral for pentanol and divide it by the integrals of the pentanol plus the carboxylic acid. Okay. And then if I want a percentage, I'm gonna take that and multiply it by 100%. That's the approach I'm gonna use. So what I've got here is an integral of four over four plus one, and that's four fifths. And if I convert that to percentage, that's gonna be 80%, okay? Conversely, if I do the same thing for the pentanoic acid, I'm gonna get 20%. So I've got 80% pentanol and 20% pentanoic acid, okay? So when you're giving percent compositions, you wanna Make sure you identify what it is you're talking about, 80% of what, or 20% of what. So I'm saying 
exactly what those are. All right, so that's one example of how you would just use a couple of peaks in the NMR spectrum. You're sure uh, of their assignment and you can use their ratios to come up with a percent composition. Let's look at just one more example. Suppose we've got some 2-butanol and some 1-butanol. And the reason we're looking at this example, what makes it a little different is that the peaks that sort of stick out, they're, they're not crowded together like all of those peaks on the right. These ones over here around three and a half and four, those are again the hydrogens on the carbon next to the oxygen. And so they are a little bit further from the others. They're a little bit cleaner integrals. And what complicates them is that one of those, the one to four, corresponds to only one hydrogen in the molecule, whereas the other one, the 3.6, corresponds to two hydrogens in the molecule. And so the reason that complicates things just a little bit is we've got to normalize the integrals. And so now it's the same approach, except this time I'm using normalized integrals instead of just the raw integrals here. And by normalizing, what I mean is that I'm going to take the integral and divide it by the number of hydrogens. All right. So in this case, um, the integral at 4.03, you know, what would we say these are? This looks like it's kind of one to one and a half. Or in whole numbers, maybe it's three to two. So I'm going to say this is um, three over one hydrogen, okay, an integral of three hydrogens, but it represents one hydrogens, and so that's just three. And this one is two over two hydrogens. The integral looks like two, and it's meant to represent two hydrogens, and that's going to be one. Okay, so the actual values that I'm going to use in that calculation are not two and three. They're going to be one and three because of the fact that I've taken into account that this peak stands for two hydrogens and that peak stands for only one. And so then the percent of the two pen, the two butanol is going to be I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to abbreviate a little bit, but it comes down to three over three plus one, right, equals, it's gonna be 75%. Whereas this one, it's gonna be one over three plus one, after we've taken into account the number of hydrogens they stand for, that's gonna be 25%. So 75% two butanol, and 25% one butanol. Okay, I hope that helps. Now you know how to 